The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Hi, Tom. How are you guys doing? Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the primal. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning. I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced, natural, wild world. To recover our natural health and regain rights and freedoms. Good morning. I'm Paige Clark. And it's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg, 76 degrees, going up to about 87. We had a little cold front coming in. It's kind of nice to have the humidity down yesterday, I yeah. thought. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, please subscribe to our Health Signals newsletter. This is news you can use. It uh, comes into your mailbox twice a month. And we kind of follow the show outline, and we find things that we think you need to know to stay healthy. That's for sure. And please also pick up our Primal Edge, our one-shot wonder, over 310 organic cell-ready ingredients, all made to get the good stuff in you. And the bad stuff out. And we're taking your phone calls this morning at 877-927-6648. Really working on those S's with my little jaw work I'm doing here. You guys be patient with me. I'm working on my whole jaw and opening all of that up mm -hmm. and my airway and the really fascinating things that are going on there in the, in the world of improving our airway and, um, and releasing neck and shoulder tension, which I've had my entire life. So I'm going through this process. I have some different devices in my mouth. makes it a little tough to talk, but... Um, well, it's we have to go through this, and one of the reasons we go through this now is because the lack of nutrition in our food over the last millennia, I would say, and showing up even more and more with uh, fake food, uh, food that really is not geared towards us, more geared towards I don't know what, actually. Right. But Tom O'Brien was talking about the Impossible Burger and the Beyond Burger the other day. Uh, Possibly. I call this franking food. Yeah, of course, and I do too. But what he was, he was talking about it because of the financial, I guess they just went on to the stock market. But I thought we'd go over this a little bit. This is definitely in our bailiwick, and uh, this is the fake type of meat. And, you know, a lot of stuff in the news about not eating meat. I mean, they're really pushing this agenda, and they're pushing this agenda because we know that uh, packaged food and uh, vegetables and things last a little bit longer than the meat does. Well, the other thing is empires in the past mm -hmm. and the elite, mm -hmm. which we know there's a, a, a group of people that are trying to become the elite class while the rest of us are, mm -hmm. are the serfs. Yeah, and we, a see, we, see, we see the, uh, the gap widening with the, each term of presidency, I would say. It doesn't really matter if it's a Republican in or a Democrat. Each time they take a little bit from the bottom and they give it to the top, it seems like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah. a club. It's yeah. really a le not yeah. a left-right paradigm. Oh, no, not at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. However, the whole point of it is is that there's really profit motive and control motives there. Yeah. And we've seen this in history, yeah. right? I agree. For sure. I agree. So let's talk about these burgers. So uh, Beyond Be uh, Meat uh, went public. So... Uh, Better than expected IPO, it's like. Yeah, well, people are on the bandwagon, I guess. So. Yeah, there's a lot of people, like you said, um, not only is there a push, like a guilt, shame, shame, shame right. for That's eating part of animal foods. Well, that goes along with the global warming, in a sense, too, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. now, and I always said, we don't like the pollution. We want to get rid of the pollution. That's what our show is really about, getting the pollution out of food. Mm -hmm. But we want it out of our environment, too. But I don't feel that has to do with global warming. Global warming is a made-up thing. Yeah, it gets warmer, but it also gets cooler. Right. Well, there's, yeah, there's temperature variation. I read an yeah. interesting thing. Maybe after the break, I'll bring it up that hit me this morning when I was getting ready. I saw it and it was regarding, you know, what, well, how the weather manipulation, what the real reason might be for that. Mm -hmm. But getting back to that, what's in these burgers? It's, one of them's called the Beyond Meat. That's the one that went public, correct? Yeah, that's the one. And yeah. it's basically a soy burger. You remember we were in school lunches? And, and we ate these burgers, and 
They had a funny name. What was the name? Well, called? the one I remember was the Boca Burger, and that was in the 80s. And okay. it was around 85 or 86 they came up with the Boca Burger, which was the substitute for meat. And it seems like every 10 years or so they come out with a new one. But this is basically the same thing. And if we look at the ingredients, it's water, most of it, and then, of yeah. course, soy protein concentrate. Uh, it's coconut oil, so uh, sunflower oil, natural, natural flavors, flavors, which is always suspect. Yeah. <laughs> and then you really have small ingredients is. of like potato uh, protein, some kind of yeast and dextrose, and then the starch, modified starches, and the. We had a bunch of mixed tocopherols yeah. and antioxidants that are most likely petroleum based, not right. natural B vitamins that you would get, on and on and on. Um, and uh, another but they're thing, heavily processed. That's, I mean, that's what I was just going to say. I mean, they're heavily processed foods, and we know that's not good. The other thing. As those of you who watched our show know that soy is not a toy for the girl or the boy, as far as I'm concerned. And although there are ancient cultures that have eaten soy, and a lot of people that refrain from eating meat use soy as a protein source, the only source of pro soy that is good for us to eat is soy that has been properly fermented. Yeah, and usually and they put them... that becomes a different food. Yeah, and they do these in these used vats, and a lot of times they put them under water in the sea with the salt and everything like that. Sometimes they just put them in brine, mm -hmm. other ways of salt. And, and they, to remind you that most of the soy in this country is what? I would say not. It's and GMO. No, it's GMO, yeah, GMO so it's too. not even usually organic right. soy. And this happens with other things, too. Now, this other burger uh, is uh, has the pea concentrate in it. Yeah. So very okay. similar. And we talked about this just before we went on the air because my mother used to make pea soup and I used to love it. Mm -hmm. And I remember she used to uh, soak it for at least two days overnight. Right. And that's twice. what doesn't happen. Right. And then she cooked it. And then she put it in the soup to cook it again, and it was and put in the for, refrigerator, and then brought it out the next exactly. two days for a day. So, so it's these processes being really make a difference in cooking, not only uh, vegetables and uh, starches, but also with meat. When you do this, it really does enhance it. That's, uh, a, that's, a, that's a great uh, pearl, folks. You know, if you are going to eat vegetables, remember that most of them are best for us when they are cooked and recooked, especially the starchy vegetables. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that I always did with, uh, I had a friend, Ron, many years ago, who now passed away, was a macbiotic teacher. I mean, he was right, a, I remember that. Yeah, and he taught me how to cook the vegetables, and what he always does, he cooked them, and then he threw them in the refrigerator, and then brought them back out and cooked them again, and then they would serve them with the, with the rice and things like that. But it's a good way of doing it, and our ancestors learned this because they had to survive. And when times get tough, we do turn to vegetables and starches for our main protein because the other stuff is just not available, and this stuff is a lot easier to keep. So that's why I call them starvation foods, things mm -hmm. like macaroni during the Depression. Uh, so the bread, of course, was given to the peasants. They used to call it cake. Remember the famous entry, uh, the French lady who said, give them cake. Well, I Let do them eat cake. I do yeah. believe that, <clears throat> that the, the elite or the ruling class yeah. has a strategy here, and it's not, it's not benevolent. <laughs> it's, well, it's the it's, it's, we're going to keep the animal foods. They know the truth that it's really more likely that we're going into severe weather differences, cold weather, <laughs> crop right. And loss. this is what the kings and the, the royals used to do in Europe and England. So they would make sure that there's plenty of animal foods for the elite, yeah. but the peasants would subsist well, plus on these the, the elite has foods. a lot more time on their hands so they can go hunting as a sport and have that food available for them where the peasants were not allowed to kill the king's deer or anything else. Exactly. The king's yeah. deer, correct. And why? So, because they didn't want the peasants eating the deer. They yeah. wanted to save the so deer So I for see them. this as a propaganda process, much like the kings used to do. And you can have all the stuff out there you want, just don't eat the meat. Exactly. Right, right. Save the good stuff for the elites. I yes. got it. Yeah, man. There okay. you go. Okay, we'll be right class. back, folks. <laughs> You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. 
That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. C call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, Franken foods such as the Beyond Burger, uh, that's not the only kind of food that we're being bombarded with that's not truly food. Americans are overexposed to products that are high in calories, bad fats, I'm going to say, sugar and salt. According to New Northwestern Medicine, a study that reports that the United States packaged food supply and beverage supply in 2018 was ultra processed and in general unhealthy. And I really believe that this is an overreaching statement. I mean, I think it's really hits it on the head because you go to Europe and so forth and even in certain places when you go out west you you have access to better food and uh, the food well, yeah. I think this nails it on the head when you stop at a gas station in Europe <clears throat> you eat off of China oh really yeah no you stop everything is a China and uh -huh. silverware Wow. there's no you know all the the rest stops and everything there's no disposable paper stuff hmm. that's really interesting. except for the napkin maybe yeah you know, pretty amazing. Well, a ultra processed food, of course, th this type of term, you know, I mean, beer is ultra high, highly processed and mm -hmm. it's organic and good. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So I think there are some foods that are. The problem is, of course, our manufacturers of the food or the suppliers of our food want to extend this shelf life as long as possible. Mm -hmm. And you can't really do that with real food. If you go to the grocery store and touchy feely the grapefruits and the you know, all the produce out there. This is what our ancestors always did. We wanted to find the, the stuff that felt the best, uh, was a little tangy. Uh, we wanted to have those uh, freshest possible thing. So they would always test all these things, and there were various methods. I remember plunking a watermelon and uh, pulling out a thing of a... Um, a root vegetable, see if it's good enough, you know. And I remember my grandmother t teaching me these things, all these different techniques to see if that's fresh, if that's fresh. Each one had a little different technique. Mm -hmm. Now we have boxes, and now we have bottles. And well, and so even our fresh food is picked before ripening on True. the vine. Yeah. And that, therefore, they do not develop the nutrients that they would if they were properly yeah. harvested. I agree. So, so since about 80% of Americans' total calorie consumption comes from store-bought foods and beverages, 
Um, it really plays a central role in the development of chronic disease, including obesity and cardiovascular disease, because we're not really eating real food. Now, this study was published in July 24th of the journal called Nutrition, and it aims to provide new information for consumers, researchers, and policymakers to encourage food manufacturers to reformulate or replace unhealthy products and to inform the U.S. government on any actions. How about informing the public? Yeah, but how about just informing the public and just, just eat real food? And if it comes in a package or a box, maybe it's not a good food for you, right? Well, that's the way I look at it, and uh, I, we do have some packaged food, but we put it in the closet for emergencies. Yeah, so our, there's uh, a place we're, for it. We're always eating the freshest food, and m you know, the last few years we've been eating mostly 90% just the meat, and it's a much safer approach, I feel, and feel fantastic. Yeah, the whole kind of uh, carnivory uh, group is, are really growing. It's growing because it seems to work and it's less complicated and you know everybody says well it's so hard to get on the paleo or do the ketone type of diet. Uh, you've got to change your mind about that because it's how easy it's to grill a piece of meat. Mm -hmm. That's pretty easy mm -hmm. and it takes 10 minutes you know and even if you're doing something large like ribs it might take an hour but the process is really nice. It's clean you have Usually we have leftovers. Last night we had pork chop and I had half of it left over. And I think we need to spend a little less time on food and more on light. And really, mm -hmm. quite frankly... And if, life, maybe, too. Yeah, life, <laughs> but, but the light cycles. If yeah. you are getting proper sunlight, you can almost eat anything you want to. Mm -hmm. You really can. If you are actually getting into a circadian rhythm and outdoors for the majority of the time, away from blue light and artificial light. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a big Really, step. you can pretty much, not that you would want, you, you would not naturally even want to eat a lot of these Franken foods, but truly, you can, most of the people that I am kind of following indicate that as they become more of an outsider, um, the foods that they eat are less and less important because really food is a substitute for light. That's what we're getting in the food. Mm -hmm. We're getting light. Well, the sun certainly controls everything, and that's what makes everything grow. I mean, but that's what grow. food is. So, yeah. I mean, food so if is we were light. that advanced that we, we could live off life, that would be wonderful. I haven't tested that theory myself, <laughs> but well, do you notice I, that the I more, know what you mean. The more you're outdoors, you know, the better the, you feel. No the better you it. feel, and the less food you typically need. Mm -hmm. And that's where we talk about. The fact that, you know, when you're in a snowy, cold environment, mm -hmm. you need that food for metabolic energy. Yeah. But when you're getting it from the sun, you have less need for food. True. Mm -hmm. So the scientists analyzed over 230,000 products and using the NOVA class classification system, uh, whatever that is. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, they is. developed that at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. It's uh, ultra-processed food and beverages. Okay. Yeah. So they found 71% of products such as uh, bread, salad dressing, snack foods, uh, sweet, sugary drinks were ultra-processed among the top 25 manufacturers by sales volume, and 86% of the products were classified as ultra-processed. Now, it used to be that bread and bakery products were the only thing in America that was ever processed. Mm -hmm. Milk was never processed. It was right. just put in the thing. So we've really changed the way that we've consumed food in the last 50 to 100 years. Uh, and we are creating different species. Our species is declining. Uh, you're a perfect example of wanting to change back, to get your more face fuller that we used to have. And this is what Western for Price airway. found. Air, yeah, air, primarily yeah. for airway. I mean, but we also have an epidemic. So well, we have an epidemic of airway disease. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get on the plane and I see a husband and wife with their companion CPAPs. And I'm not blaming people for wearing CPAPs, but the better thing would be to develop the jaw structure by eating the proper hard foods, yeah. like meat, mm -hmm. so that we can develop the jaws. I, I, um, I'm telling you, we've got to get with these kids early to get them eating the hard foods the that scary, we were actually oh, designed to eat. Yeah, and the scary part is, of course, uh, many of the kids, and as you go into a poorer section, these kids are eating the school food which is pretty much the worst that you can have. Well, we, we see that the, the processed foods are the ones that are subsidized, right. not natural foods. That's, That's right. very disappointing, yeah. you know? And, um, you know, the scientists in this study ranked foods based on their healthfulness number defined by a health star rating, which scored packaged foods between a half star being the unhealthiest <laughs> to five stars. <laughs> to five stars. And when that's the top, it needs to be ten stars to be good. Mm. Is that it? And I just wonder how they determined whether or not it was healthy. 
Well, you know? if, uh, yeah, if you look under a microscope, it's a different thing if it's going through your body. You might see things in there. Exactly. They, they might be capital, capitalized uh, that you don't get it at all. There's certain ways that your body acts, and when it gets uh, ingredients that it's fooling it, it's really not sure what to do and probably just goes on to the waste pile. As far but, as but I want to look see. at this. It says the scientists discovered that the breads in particular have 12% higher sodium content. I mean, give me a break. This is like... This is like stupid stuff, you know. It's kind of like, let's, you know, let's talk about how our body uses the food as fuel. Well, not only that, what kind of sodium are they putting in there? Right. We well, don't. Do we need sodium. Sodium is crucial. Yeah. I mean, the way you lower blood pressure is you give someone natural sodium. Yeah, but, but because what's in the bread is sure, surely not that. Well, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's. Well, I mean, it may be. That's the whole point. I don't Half, think they're using this. Uh, the well, seat. natural sodium that you get, yeah. like from celery or something, yeah. is, is good. Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. want to lower your blood pressure, eat some celery stalks. Uh, and, Himalaya and, sea salt. Yeah, or get a good healthy salt, right. Okay, so uh, we're on the break. So when we come back, uh, I'm not sure what we're going to be talking about, but we'll find something. We'll be right back, folks. Be right back. like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back. So I'll introduce this one because I'm maybe a little more familiar with this subject than you are. Yeah, I'm not exactly. sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but, you know, I, when I go to jujitsu, I tend to stop by the local beer place uh, you like afterwards to have a little beer. and have a 
beer. And I think it's a good way for me to kind of recover. And, uh, you know, I used to have the protein shakes and stuff, but I found beer much more satisfying. Gives you a little buzz, too. That doesn't hurt. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're exhausted after jiu-jitsu, it's the perfect thing. So when I see articles like this, I definitely want to bring it to your attention because I think even though we know that the news comes from all these different sources and who knows what their ultimate game is. Yeah, I think so we going can... along the same line I've been saying, yeah. could it be that these Beer organizations like yeah. MASH.com are more or less fronts to control the public mm -hmm. to do what the controllers want us. Well, I drink lots the, of beer, I think, dr drink lots of wine, yeah. smoke lots of pot, smoke cigarettes. Remember in the 50s, yeah. the doctors were saying, and when I smoke, Nash I smoke a camel. is a uh, type of a magazine that's made towards enthusiasts of beer and people who yeah. brew the beer. There's no yeah. doubt about and, it. And I'm just saying yeah. that. But, but, but I like the idea. I like knowing when things <laughs> that I enjoy are actually good. And these are reasons why beer is actually good for you. And it will keep your bones strong. Yeah, and there's many things in beer that's good for you. First of all, we know it goes through a process of fermentation. A fermentation. So that in itself tells you there's some bacteria working in there instead of just the ingredients itself. Mm -hmm. And we know we live off the bacteria's excretions. Mm -hmm. This is the way it works. Well, that's... The, the bacteria are what actually make our B vitamins. Exactly. Those are the B vitamins we want. And yeah. the B vitamins are catalysts for so right. much. Right. It says here, but it comes with a, a little amount of concern. There's always a chance of overindulging when it comes to alcohol. Beer has a reputation for being the one that's going to put a few inches on your waistline. And, yeah, if you drink lots and lots, a case of beer a day, you're going to put on some weight for sure. Yeah. Uh, having one or two probably is not a bad thing. I tend to feel better with one. I feel pretty good with two, but not as good. Well, the time that I want a beer is mm -hmm. after I've done yard work. Oh, perfect. I time. don't know what it is. It's just something about that hearing that sound, mm -hmm. you know, after doing yard work. Well, the effervescence, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, the taste of it is a little... And I want it to stay cold for the whole time. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah I don't know why the Europeans ever... Well, because they didn't have ice for a long time. I, I like a little salt in my beer. Do you? No, I don't like that either. Um, you know what, um, what they drink in the summer? Um, they have a... It's called a Rattler in uh, Austria. It's really? a beer lemonade mix. Oh. Kind of refreshing. Well, it's kind of like the uh, what the pale ales have, that uh, citrus flavor to them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Some of them more overwhelming, but uh, I can like it. So but getting back to that one about the bones, can we just okay. go to that? Yeah, because I brought that up, because I, I never knew that. It said, many of us grew up hearing that milk is one of the best things you can drink for strong bones, but here's some exciting news for grown-ups. It turns out that science says beer is pretty great, too. <laughs> and Cordial it's not use. because of the calcium. At the University of California, Davis, they discovered that beer contains high amounts of dietary silicon or oh. silica, horsetail, yeah. ancient plant, it's a key uh, which ingredient. has been found to be a key ingredient in the body's ability to maintain healthy connective tissues and bones. Very cool. Mm. Not all beers are equal, though. The silicon uh, content uh, from, comes from the hops and the malted barley, so beers that are high in both contain more silicon. In other words, you'll have to pick a particular beer that you're so looking for. So a high for. hops and high barley beer is going to give IPAs you the IPAs especially, and I well, really, I, just, I, I love the IPAs. I love the ales, mm -hmm. pale ales I like a lot. I like the amber ones and the red ones. I like them all. I mean, okay. I don't like them really citrusy and sweet. That's right, That's the only gotcha. thing I don't like. Okay, but gotcha. That's just me. Well, how about this? Beer can keep you smiling pretty. Can you smile that. when you drink a beer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, but can it actually help keep the dentist away? Um, and anything that keeps the dentist away makes a lot of people happy. And according to Healthline, there's been some, but not many, studies that show the impact of beer, and particularly the hops, on your teeth. And it's uh, good news so far, which research shows it may help fight cavities. Yeah, the Journal of Biomedicine and Biotechnology, uh, they looked at selection of uh, drinks, including Guinness, black and green tea, and cranberry juice, and they looked at how effective they were in destroying the bacteria that causes things like genovitis and cavities. And Guinness had more serious antibacterial and antimicrobial properties, and it was also found to help and keep all those little nasties uh, that did survive from adhering to your teeth. Well, there you go, because Guinness is known to be a very B vitamin rich, again, so there's very a lot of... Very robust, deep, chocolatey the covered The B vitamins beer. are byproduct of the good bacteria that mm -hmm. are in there, so that's something good to, to know. 
Uh, yes, beer makes you more creative. It's I well like known that. that a lot of great writers tapped into their genius by tipping a uh, little drink or two, picking up the pen, and then uh, the alcohol really does its own thing. And I, I guess marijuana did that too, uh, helped help me write songs when I was in the 60s and stuff. Kind of got you into a zone? Yeah, it gets you into a, a zone rather quickly, and uh, you stay there for quite a while, and it helps you be creative. Beer certainly does that. Uh, I would say other alcohol does that, too. Well, I, th I think that, you know, not in excess, but oh, you stop sure. and think about sure. the pub, where mm -hmm. beers are shared. People are getting creative in conversation. Yeah. Creativity is in communication and sure. expression, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, I think I can sense. see that happening. Beer also relaxes you, and when you relax, the part of the brain that deals with intuition, association, and creativity is firing on all cylinders. Ooh, there you go. Oh, yeah, I've had lots of brainstorms over a couple <laughs> beers or a couple glasses of wine. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so when you're not taking yourself too seriously, you know, you kind of relax and let down, you're better at making connections that a completely sober mind might not. You know, again, <laughs> we can take this for what they're saying, mm -hmm. and, and we can go, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Or we could say, is someone trying to sell us something? <laughs> well, I think both are in order, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, how about this one? But get your fiber through beer. Yeah, and that's something I certainly never thought of. But and again, uh, things, the, the old dark beers, Guinness beer, you yeah, know. Has, has the fiber in it. And even, you know, this whole fiber thing, they say fiber is only with, uh, you know, plant-based products. Hey, listen but, to this. But let me finish. I'm listen. sorry. There's fiber in beer. Yeah. I, I mean, the fiber in meat, too. Yeah, we, just not, we've done that show. You yeah, know. and they always say, well, if you're eating meat, you're not eating any fiber. Well, meat has fiber. The structure of muscle meat is fiber itself. It's just not classified legally as fiber. It has to be plant. And then we have to just argue the fact that were we ever designed to really process fiber? And remember our Russian guy that we went over? The, the, the gut menace yeah. and fiber menace? Yeah. Uh, gut sense and Yeah, because if we look at the animals that are heavy eaters of that type of fiber, mm -hmm. they have these stomachs where they throw the stuff in to let it ferment and break down. They can't break it down without the bacteria. We don't happen to have that bacteria. That's exactly right. Hey, this is what I saw. Okay. I didn't know this. In the 1930s, it was a different time back then. Mm -hmm. And it was a time, along with the 1920s and 40s, that Guinness was advertised as being good for you. It was practically a health drink, and it was even recommended for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Well, Again, the, the elixir the that the medicine man used to come around, what was that? I mean, give me a break. That was an alcohol beverage, right? I mean, Always. All of the all of the great tinctures and so forth, and uh, the bartender was actually a little chemist that there created health tonics. Mm -hmm. I have a book on my shelf. And your daughter's quite a chemist, too. Yeah, she's, she's a great mixologist. She is, but... I actually had a friend that was going to write a book based on how the spirits were used as health tonics. <laughs> and I might bring that book in. Maybe we'll do a show on that. Uh, it's an old book. It's um, Drink to Your Health. And oh. it's about alcoholic be beverages for your health. Maybe we'll bring that in. we got to take a break. We'll be right with it. Pick up some of our Primal Edge, by the way. Take a shot of that to keep the doctor away and keep you healthy. We'll be right Mix back. it with your beer. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. 
Right now, you can spend only $495, and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars. So you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of the Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFNN newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. Nico and I were talking about some of the benefits of probiotic-type fermented foods and beer and so forth. But now let's talk about... Well, um, before that, uh, let's go to the pea protein. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, Fletch in the chat room said pea protein is very bad for those with gout. And mm -hmm. uh, it's just a hard thing to digest. And you brought up the fact of that book, uh, The Plant uh, yeah, Paradox. The Plant Paradox that we, again, as Nico and I have said, legumes are in that list of foods that are hard for us. To digest and that's why it's really not on paleo or the ketone type of diet. Unless you have that. Nico's grandma who used to soak it <laughs> two or three times, it, yeah. you know, and exactly. recook them and recook them. And another them. thing she did too, uh, she says, you know, we don't put as much meat into it these days. She says, and this was in the 50s when we just moved to Canada, she says, in the old days it was mostly meat. This is where we would put that big shank of pork. You know, and that's what the meal was really about. And there was very few of the peas. Mm -hmm. And as uh, her grandmother went through the 20s when we had the Depression, the meat became scarcer and scarcer, and therefore the pea soup became prominent. Right, right. The peas grew and the meat shrunk. <laughs> exactly. But, but that's something to think about, folks, is that, in fact, that is the issue with a lot of vegetables. We really don't have the design to break them down. And although the world wants to convince you that that's what we're supposed to eat, it's the, uh, the evidence is pretty clear it's not. And that's, this is not 90 or 100 I'm, percent. I'm, there's a lot of people that do very well on mm -hmm. uh, eating uh, nothing but vegetables. I'm not one of those people, mm -hmm. and uh, most people aren't. But there are some mm -hmm. that seem to do well on that, and that's how things happen. Or at least in the short term. Yeah, yeah that's for sure, too. But we just decided we wanted to cover a little bit about antibiotics, uh, the side effects and alternatives. This comes to us from Green Med Info and Dr. Kelly Brogan, who is a medical doctor. Because, you know, folks, th as a culture, we use a lot of antibiotics. And we use them for everything. The Ca yeah. Yeah, antibiotics means anti-life. Right. Uh, I mean, but we're just using them rather indiscriminately for coughs, cuts, urinary tract infections. And, you know, it... If it, or just in case, sometimes people, you know, they go and get a Z-Pack. This is not a good move. And, and the, the other side of the coin to this whole thing is because I remember back through my life taking antibiotics at certain times when it probably saved my life. Uh, maybe Absolutely. not. Absolutely. That's, that's what that's, you save them for. You save them for yeah, those, those opportunities. Yeah, so uh, to use them... Uh, it can be good, but to use them all the time right. if, is the real You could problem. be considered reckless or ignorant if you opt out to not use them. I, I am very well aware of that. But you could also die of a deadly infection that could kill you, is what you will hear if you um, don't use them. So what, what we really want to find out is maybe the true danger is 
and does lie in, the ins in assaulting your body with an anti-life, the actual meaning of the word, chemical that could very well be a Russian roulette of unintended harm. And the reason for this, uh, I think, is that uh, it's not discriminatory. In other words, when it uh, goes in there and kills the bacteria, it kills all the bacteria or most of the bacteria. That's the good and the bad. So the bacteria that's trying to help you is also compromised. Well, we really are. As you and I have discussed, we are really more of a host for bacteria. There's more bacteria on us than there are us. There's, <laughs> you know, maybe, yeah. maybe... 10 trillion human cells, but there's 50 trillion bacteria on us. So we're going to go over the benefits, and then we will also kind of give you some of the safe alternatives that you might seriously consider as an alternative to antibiotics. But the benefits, they obviously work, right? Right. And they do sometimes. And we're learning that our dogmatic assumptions about the sacred cows of conventional medicine may be a leaning house of cards. The question is, do they really work, or are they good at suppressing the symptom? Those of us that have studied homeopathy are aware that antibiotics may actually drive the disease deeper into a different tissue. Could be, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. Um, and it could also be a little bit of a placebo. I mean, you could take the antibiotic and you say, I mean, I know some, some people that feel awful, and then they wait a few days to try and get better, and then they go to the doctor, and then they do antibiotic for a couple of days. And go, and they're I feel already better. on the incline. Yep. Yeah, they were already healing, anyways. Yep. Yep. That happens quite a bit, I'm mm -hmm. sure. And the placebo effect, we know this does work uh, in a way. So uh, when you take that chicken soup and your grandma says, you know, uh, tap your forehead, put a little cold towel on your forehead, you start feeling better. And generally these things are three, four, five days, and then you start to improve. So, but I think, like I said, I know it's probably saved my life a number of times. I've oh, yeah, me too. I stuff. mean, I look, there's times that, but that's why you want to not use them indiscriminately. Right. Let's talk about the risks, for okay. example. Um, you know, if you have an upper respiratory infection, we aren't sure, you know, let's say a doctor says we're not sure if it's necessarily bacterial, but you could go ahead and take the z pack just in case. Oh, and it's unlikely, but it's possible that you could be left bedbound from neurological damage and develop a serious opportunistic infection and possibly even a brand new psychiatric diagnosis like bipolar. Hope you feel better soon. And that's the risk that people take when they go in and their doctor says, well, we don't know if it's bacterial virus, but here, here's a ZPAC. See if you get better. Yeah. And that's what the risk we're having of driving the disease into something that it develops, that comes and out later. And remember, we're also constrained, uh, in a sense, by our work. Uh, we have to, because we're slaves and we have to have a job to exist in the society, now we have more incentive to take these antibiotics because we have to get back to work. Yeah. Uh, and you know these uh, the health insurance companies and all push these all all these things where you may not take it if you were at home and you didn't have to go to work right but you would actually maybe tough it out yeah yeah and all of this affects our microbiome folks because this is a balance between what we might want to call the good guys and the bad guys and with the understanding that an inner ecosystem is dri drives our epigenetic expression uh, this ranges from nutrient production kind of like the B vitamins, uh, to metabolic health and to hormone balance and to our immunity and how we uh, handle our inflammatory response. Yeah, and they looked at uh, the super healthy modern hunter-gatherers to qualify that their gut health is the beneficial stuff. Right. And they find out when uh, we're taking probiotics and things like that, what actually happens is when we eat food uh, with like Roundup in it and the chemicals and right. things like that, this is actually attacking that microbiome of ours that is there to keep us healthy. So it kind of forces us again to use these antibiotics which are not as natural and can be problems later on in life. If, we, if you're on antibiotics for a long time, 20 years from now, there's, those effects are still there and your health is diminished by those effects. And this is exactly, it's come to the conclusion that common knowledge is that the indiscriminate use of these antibiotics are killing a bacteria um, may come with a cost, as I said. Um, these other, you know, depression and so forth, bipolar, uh, other, other infections later that show up and you don't really connect the dots that it was related to a course of antibiotics. Yep. Um, you know, some people think they're just going to get a yeast infection or diarrhea. It's much deeper than that. Well, that's the seasonal flu that comes around and doesn't seem to bother me or you as much tends to hit these people more because they've already been compromised. You're in mm -hmm. a weakened state, so you're going to be much more uh, susceptible to this. Our primary concern 
for us now is to have those natural bugs in us mm -hmm. to help alleviate all these problems that come around on a yearly basis from the type of world we live and in. And just real like quick, because we've got to go to a break, and then we'll come back and talk about some of the alternatives of significant interest to this particular psychiatrist, Dr. Kelly Brogan, is the well-documented psychiatric risk of antibiotics. And yep. She imagines that there are very few people uh, that consented for acute onset psychosis or suicidal tendencies before they were prescribed an antibiotic. But we see this over and over again. Yep. Again, the effect is much deeper. We'll be right back. Be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as the number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technician's Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. And welcome back. So we're going to switch over to uh, the, the benefits. alternatives. There, the is, benefits. there yes. is a silver lining. And um, well, the many one. of these plant-derived therapies can easily be incorporated in your daily yeah. meals as a preventative. So silver. <laughs> silver lining. That's why I the said silver that. lining. <laughs> <laughs> and silver has been <clears throat> used, uh, particularly in teeth implants and things like that. Uh, it's, it's been, been used for over two thousand years. Yeah. I mean, uh, people used to put a silver coin in their canteens mm. to prevent infection. Yeah. And there's and so silver can be used as an oral antibiotic or as treatment on infections. They use it a lot in um, skin infections. In MRSA prevention. Yeah. Next is botanical herbs. Yeah, herbs of course are the plants that are still wild. I mm -hmm. contend, and they're kept in that state. They haven't been domesticated because they're so powerful, and we need to use these. And uh, all the medicine men and all the ancient cultures had their different concoctions for all the different things that their tribe would be susceptible to. So when we so, think of herbs, I mean, many of those that are in the same family as the ginger plant mm -hmm. or cinnamon 
has antibacterial ca capabilities, and oregano. Oregano is a very powerful. And anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. properties also. They sure do. Many of the same herbs uh, that are anti-inflammatory, because why is the inflammation there, fighting an infection, right. are also antibiotic. Yeah, so, so we uh, see things like golden seal, echinacea, or uh, oregano, elderberry, many things. And of course, I'll put this in the newsletter. Yes. And the, thing are, uh, the other thing is the probiotics, which is the opposite of the... Get more soldiers. That's right. Exactly. So, so the, they may not be as powerful as the uh, antibiotic, in a sense, because the antibiotic kills, and the life takes a little bit longer. So uh, these are something that you need to take, I think, on a continuous basis. We used to get this stuff through our food. Well, one of the quick ways, most ineffective or most inexpensive ways mm -hmm. to get probiotics is as you do. Take a swig of pickle juice. Yep. Take a spoonful of sauerkraut or kimchi. Mm -hmm. Just make it part of something you take with a meal. Or you can go ahead and buy expensive probiotics, which are limited in their species. I yeah. think it's better to get it from and your the food. And the thing to do is uh, when you take those supplements, uh, mix them up about every quarter is what I do. Yes, yeah, sh shake it up. Shake Use it a different ones. Garlic, guys. Don't yeah, forget garlic. Yeah, there's garlic and honey and things like this. Manuka and, uh, honey. But just decide that you're going to get back to building an arsenal of natural things to yeah. fight infection. Yeah, and we'll see you next week, folks. Thanks a lot for sticking around. Have a great day. See you Bye -bye. next show.